United States has only been at peace for 17 years of its 246-year history. It thrives through war. It cashes in on war. During the first two years of the Second World War, Washington remained neutral, merely supplying weapons. America's isolation from war ended in December 1941 when Japan attacked American military installations in the Pacific. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you this important bulletin from the United Press. Flash, Washington. The White House announces Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. No matter how long it may take us to overcome this premeditated invasion, the American people in their righteous might will win through to absolute victory. Then President Roosevelt vastly increased government defense spending. The percentage of U.S. gross national product devoted to defense spending rose from 2% in 1939 to 42% in 1945. During this period of time, the U.S. government placed $175 billion of prime defense contracts with U.S. corporations. Two-thirds of these awards went to only 100 companies and 20% to only 5 companies. After four years of involvement in the Second World War, the United States transformed from a mid-level global power to the world leader. With rapid rise in power and influence, building a global hegemony, the military-industrial complex grew to gigantic proportions during the war and then flourished during the four decades of the Cold War. The United States began to exert efforts building a world-leading weapons industry and extended it to new industries like aerospace, energy, electronics, information technology, and bioengineering. Think tanks and the media have all been dragged into it and they became part of the complex of shared interest. Between 1948 and 1989, the government spent more than $10 trillion for national defense and much of the money found its way into the bank accounts of the defense contractors, their employees, and their suppliers. In 1961, the U.S. went to the war in Vietnam to support a pro-U.S. government and contain communism. Back then, there was an increase in the use of contractors to maintain increasingly complex weapon systems alongside troops in the field, as well as the use of private air transport companies like Air America. Take General Electric, one of the United States' largest military contractors. The company's working aerospace production was mainly for the government and was considered essential for the nation's security. Between 1962 and 1970, the company experienced dramatic growth. Over the course of eight years, sales improved at a relatively steady pace. Sales in 1970 were $3.75 billion higher than sales in 1962. Meanwhile, during the period between 1970 and 1989, the profit rates of the top 50 defense contractors substantially exceeded those of comparable non-defense companies. In 1991, a massive U.S.-led coalition, including NATO allies and Middle East nations, initiated an offensive and started the Gulf War in response to Iraq's invasion of Kuwait. As one of the shortest conflicts in U.S. history, it brought catastrophic consequences for Iraq. According to the Project on Defense Alternative Study, between 20,000 and 26,000 Iraqi military personnel were killed in the conflict while 75,000 others were wounded. But for the U.S., it was a success. The war helped restore American military hegemony, consolidate its control of oil, and defend the dominant position of the dollar. The United States was even able to let others pay for the bulk of the cost of war. The U.S. Department of Defense has estimated the cost of the Gulf War at $61 billion, with the U.S. providing only 11% of that. Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, and other Gulf states covered $36 billion. 
Germany and Japan covered 16 billion. Plus, the U.S. Armed Forces displayed a well-integrated approach to the use of precision munitions and long-range strikes. Many saw the battlefield as an arms bazaar that boosted sales of U.S. weapons. Since the end of the Cold War, the U.S. has launched wars in Kosovo, Afghanistan, Iraq, and many others, from which American arms dealers have made a great fortune. According to a study by Brown University, $6.4 trillion has been spent on post-9-11 wars and conflicts in more than 80 countries, and most of the budgets were transferred to the top five contractors. From 2001 to 2021, the stocks of those top five contractors outperformed the stock market overall by 58%. The wars are all about expanding the interests and the power of the U.S. My fellow citizens, at this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people, and to defend the world from grave danger. The Iraq war was perceived by many as a move to have total control of the oil resources in the region and secure Washington's dominant role in formulating global energy policies. In October 2000, Saddam Hussein moved to switch Iraq's oil trade from the dollar to the euro. But the U.S. invasion of 2003 set the country's oil industry safely back into dollar denomination. The human toll of America's wars is huge. Since 2001, U.S. military operations have killed more than 900,000 people, about 335,000 of whom were civilians. Millions were injured. Millions more were displaced. Despite the death and despair it has caused, war has been integral to America's prosperity and affluence. War is the business of America. Conflict and military operations are a hegemonic tool for the United States.